service areas. The services that an assertive community treatment team provides are not a prepackaged set of services, but rather they are part of a carefully crafted, multifaceted, personalized intervention, targeting needs in multiple areas of an individual's life. These areas of care include medication management, housing, employment, health, social roles, and family relations. The role of the team is not simply to do for a consumer, but to work closely with the person and supply the support and skills that the person needs to become more independent. One of the approaches that we use is what we call a process approach. A process approach focuses on not really doing anything in particular for a client except developing a therapeutic relationship with that individual. The goal of the process approach is not to deliver medication, not to do laundry, not to do groceries. It's really about trying to understand that person, who they are, and develop a relationship with that person. In that process of relationship, we may take them to do laundry, we may take them to the grocery store, we may deliver medication frequently or as infrequently as necessary. During those deliveries of medication and during those trips to the grocery stores, we should be teaching that individual how to do these tasks for themselves. So the process approach is about developing a relationship and using the tasks of the day to develop relationships and to teach skills for that individual to be more independent. Medication management. One tool consumers use to control symptoms of mental illness is medications. The team works closely with consumers who choose to take medications to carefully monitor the medication's effects. The team also works with individuals to develop routines to help them remember to take their medications as prescribed. Jason, um, we, we started working with Jason when he was 18 and one of the reasons that we did was he was referred to us from the school system. He had actually been institutionalized most of his childhood and adolescence. Um, but once we started really looking at what's going on with this guy, what does he want, why are these behaviors occurring, and doing a thorough assessment, which probably hadn't been done before, and kind of taking a different approach as far as the medications, but also the behaviors. It, he was in a very controlled environment, and we wanted him to be able to live independently in the community, and how were we going to do that? And a lot of times, that's just helping him learn from natural consequences of what society expects and getting him on the right medications and helping him achieve his goals. Number one being to graduate from high school. What time do you take your medications at night, Jason? Right when they turn nine. About nine o'clock? Would you still? Then I stay up till 12, 12.30. Is that because you can't go to sleep? Right. Okay. <laughs> so Jason, did you hear him say that you need to take your meds? Right. Okay. Your noon's about four, your evening's about seven, and your night time's about ten. nine or ten. Okay. All right. Illness management and recovery skills. The team teaches consumers to recognize the symptoms of their illness and the stressors that trigger those symptoms. Then they help the consumers develop and use strategies to manage those symptoms and stressors. Dom began to come see me, the ACT team, and uh, uh, one thing led to another and we started talking and I thought I needed the prog program. I thought then and uh, now that, that I'm home and, and released and after really knowing the people, I'm, I knew I, I needed it now. Uh, would try to work less hours I could, get more hours than what was really mine if I worked for somebody or I usually had people working for me. I, they'd do all the work and I'd be out looking for whatever it take to, to get my mind messed up, if you want to put it that way. And so piecing together that possibly he was self-medicating with a lot of the drug and alcohol use and, and helping him to learn different ways of coping and knowing that, yes, you can use 
the medications appropriately and they do make you feel better but also what do you do when when stressors get so great do you quit your job do you um, do something illegal to get arrested what can you do instead one of the things that we're um, very proud of Otis is that he's working full-time and he owns his own business he has enough self-esteem to be able to do that now and do it successfully and to be able to manage that. And a lot of that is just changing the way he responded to stressors um, versus go reverting back to his old patterns. I just decided that, in fact, the first day I got sentenced, that's when I decided that I don't want no more of this. It's about time I do something about it, you know, and, and I did. And, it was all me, but it took, a lot, it took some people helping. Integrated treatment for dual diagnosis. Many people who receive care from assertive community treatment teams not only have a mental illness, but also have a co-occurring alcohol or drug abuse problem. Treatment for these problems is provided directly by the team, rather than by sending individuals to drug treatment programs. This allows for careful coordination and integration of care. Actually, the, the, uh, the dual diagnosis group is a pretty rewarding group. We usually meet three times a week for a couple of hours, but uh, at the beginning we have a time of uh, food, fellowship, coffee. And the reason we do that is that most of these people do not eat properly, so how are you going to listen or retain any kind of information that you're being given uh, if, if you're, you're hungry, you know? So, I mean, I, people don't like it because I spend a hefty amount of money there, but that, that's what works. For about a period of 30 minutes, we usually open with the serenity prayer, uh, followed by a daily meditation from one of the AA books and maybe a story. Uh, usually we work on steps and then after 30 minutes we take uh, a break. Uh, it's very difficult for folks uh, with schizophrenia to focus for over that length of time so we find it it helps to take the breaks. Well, I, I, I uh, help me with my substance abuse to find me a sobriety by way of uh, Occupying my time, taking up time with me, bringing me in every morning to to the center and uh, showing me care and concern. More like uh, babysitting or petting and pampering you. But uh, uh, I found myself using less and less and less and been staying out of trouble even. You know, it took me out the street somewhat. I was staying out to 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning sometimes. and and. I, I just gave me a new lease on life somewhat. They, they, they uh, told me uh, try, and they put me in a program uh, with that dual diagnosis and 12 steps, and we, uh, we, we're good for each other. I help act and act helps me. Whatever I, I can do, I'll do, and whatever I, I need help at, if, if it's reasonable, act, or act with me. Housing. Helping assertive community treatment consumers find safe and affordable housing is not always easy. The quality of housing available to consumers varies depending on their economic resources and preferences. Teams will need to be creative and resourceful in helping people find housing and in helping people carry out activities to maintain housing, whether it is paying the rent on time or keeping up the residents. Today we are helping Cheryl find an apartment that is in a safe environment and allows her to um, focus on her health. One of the biggest challenges that assertive community treatment, space, treatment teams face is housing. The housing is not affordable based on the individuals that we work with income, which is usually Social Security. Um, so one of the things that we work very hard on is getting housing grants so that we can help subsidize their apartment rent so that they can use their funding to meet their basic needs such as food and personal items. We call up landlords that have like old houses or have rooming houses and we would go up to them and ask them, you know, 
uh, would you be interested in maybe uh, developing a contract with us? Usually we're able to find an old house somewhere or find some landlord that's tired of spending money or doesn't want to spend any money in his house because it's all going to pretty much, you know, it's being lost. But he sees that with us, he's getting the checks on a regular basis, he's happy, so he, so he basically hired uh, a crew, he basically fired the, the super, the old super and his wife because they were using drugs and they're out, got a new super who's working with us, he understands that I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna check the facility, and that if I point at something, it needs to be repaired. Employment. Assertive community treatment programs emphasize work while accepting individual differences in capacity for, and interest in, competitive employment. Teams help individuals find jobs that match their work preferences. Then, team members provide ongoing practical support to help consumers maintain a job and advance their employment goals. Other financial support services provided by the teams include helping individuals apply for benefits, as well as practical help with budgeting for daily and monthly expenses. When the client comes to us, we do what we call a vocational assessment. In that assessment, we assess the client's needs, their experience working, um, if they are getting benefits from the state, if they're not getting any benefits and they really need the money for financial situation. Based on that, we decide um, together what kind of work they would like to do. We present to them different options and they chose the right one for them. Sometimes they decide to go for a job to get benefits, get paid. Sometimes they just want to do something every day and they just chose to do a volunteer work. They, um, when they have problems, they usually contact us and we follow up and we have meetings together along with the client so we can discuss how we can help him and so they can keep the job. One of the nice things that Charles has done for himself is he actually was employed. He's having problems sleeping so we developed a job so that he could work in the evening time and his family could get some rest. So it's being creative and um, really individualizing the care and the persistence and never giving up on anyone. We work with the Medicaid office. If they have a place to go every day, a job, school, training, and they're on Medicaid, they can benefit from a bus fare from the Medicaid agency. They provide the bus fare, so we make sure that they go there at the beginning of the month and they give them transportation. Sometimes we, if they get paid in their job, we facilitate with loans until they budget their own money and they can afford to buy their own transportation fare. Sometimes we provide transportation too. We pick them up early in the morning, we drop them off, and then we pick them up until they can come up with another plan like getting assistance from the New Jersey Transit Department, they can get assistance from, through the Medicaid office, they can get assistance from the city welfare. Depending on where they have to go to work, we provide um, education on how to catch the bus, which one they need to take in order to reach their, desti uh, their destination. Um, usually they need to take one, two, three buses, but with the bus schedule, we help them to learn how to do it. The first week, we usually go with them, in the bus and we catch all the bus together until we finally know how to do it themselves and once they learn how to do it they do it on their own health good physical health is important to good mental health and so teams address both the consumers physical health and mental health concerns screening for physical health concerns begins at the initial intake and is part of an individual's comprehensive assessment team members also communicate with medical providers to coordinate care, assist with transportation to medical appointments, provide practical assistance to help consumers meet basic health needs such as daily hygiene, good nutrition, and proper rest, and educate consumers on basic health, the prevention of communicable diseases, and reproductive health. Joe was referred to us um, by Dr. Fuller. He was working with Joe in a different program, and that program didn't have the resources to help Joe with all of his needs and manage his, not only his psychiatric needs, but his medical needs, his housing needs, his substance abuse needs. And so Dr. Fuller really advocated for Joe to be referred to the assertive community treatment team. 
But it's so important, if somebody is not physically well, they can't be mentally well either. And I think oftentimes we forget that, that the two go hand in hand. And that's why it's so important to have nurses on the teams and the rest of the team members um, be educated about what is going on with this individual and how those two work together. When you can help somebody to be physically healthy, their mental health improves as well. Okay, so now we're going to go um, take your blood pressure, mm -hmm. and we're going to uh, go get you some lunch. Social roles. Teams help people develop individualized plans for enhancing, restoring, and maintaining relationships. Modeling and providing unwavering support is part of this process. Teams assist people in becoming involved in activities that help give structure to their days. Teams also help consumers participate in family activities and other social obligations. Well, before coming to the program, I was in and out of mental institutions, and uh, I was a drug user. So we started working with Charles um, when we picked him up from the Galveston County Jail and um, really worked intensely on getting the medications right, helping him to structure his day so that there are some positive things going on. We started creating socialization activities, doing more MET monitoring with them, more supportive counseling with them. And these activities, they seem to do wonders for them. And it also helps the staff. It helps the staff get to know the patient sometimes a little better on a different level. Okay, now I have to pretend that I'm in my homeland. Yeah, how can you pass all those pieces there? Huh? Oh, okay. Like they were in Puerto Rico, Santo yeah, Domingo. Okay. Family relations. The families of assertive community treatment consumers have often experienced years of worry and anxiety. Sometimes, family members find that their interactions with the consumer have come to be defined almost entirely by the consumer's mental illness. Assertive community treatment teams collaborate with family members and provide the support that lets the family go back to being a family again. Because teams can provide intensive support in the community, they can help consumers to live independent of their families if they choose. The PAC team program, it's always the client's decision whether or not the family is going to be involved in their treatment. But we have found along the years that when the family is part of the treatment, um, it helps the client to motivate themselves to keep going on and, and move on. Um, Prior to Sir Community Treatment Team working with Charles, his family would get really frustrated. They would try to get him into the clinic for um, his, his injections and he would become volatile and it would very, become very frustrating for them as well. What made a big difference is when the doctor started coming to Charles's home, interacting with the family, finding out that he's not sleeping at night, that he's too afraid to come into the clinic because of his paranoia to receive the injection, and we can actually come to the home and provide that service. That then allows the family to, to not carry that burden, and Charles to be able to take responsibility for his own treatment. Uh, the ACT team, they talk to my daddy, and they keep constant, um, keep my daddy apprised of Charles' progress or if he's not making any. Uh, I know my sister Veronica has talked to them and um, several members of my family. Oftentimes when you can get in there and educate the family about the illness, provide them support as well, providing them the support 24 hours a day, seven days a week to call and say, um, my family member's not doing well, can you come out and help us? Or to say, I'd really like for them to come for Thanksgiving dinner, but we haven't had a lot of successful Thanksgiving dinners. You know what? An ACT team person's gonna go to that family's Thanksgiving dinner to provide support for that individual. And that, it's, called, it's rebuilding um, the family so that there's respect on both sides and that person feels like they are part of the family again.